All right, this is Kevin with K-Mod. This morning we're going to walk you through the assembly of a K-Mod turnkey suspension. The first thing we do is unpack the rails, lay everything out, um, and we start by installing the HIFAX. So just grab a rail, take the HIFAX from the rear. You'll notice there's the HIFAX attaching point here on the top. That goes to the front. And we'll slide it on the rail. Okay, what you want to do is line this hole up with the, the big hole. You, you can see the big hole here. It's drilled clear through the rail. You can line that up perfect. Then we get the uh, self-tapping attachment screws. They're a Torx bit. Put them on with an impact. It's an 18 volt impact. Just line up in the holes. Try not to bottom it out too tough. Just you want to go to the end and stop. Just so the screws recessed into the HIFAX. Then we trim the HIFAX. So it blends easily with the transition of the track coming around the drivers to the tip of the rails. And also we'll trim the, the back end. We'll shorten that up and uh, put a radius on there so when you back up it doesn't catch your high fax also. The rail tip, a hacksaw works good. When we're hacksawing this, we just follow the radius of the rail. The rail's cut for the anti-stab and we just follow the radius of the rail down there to take the high fax off. Then we'll blend it with a grinder. I like 36 grit, works the best. We'll just taper that in so it's got a nice transition. Then the tail, I like using a sawzall rather than a hacksaw because it's got a little taper to it. But it comes off pretty quick. Put a little radius on the back side of this high sack so when you're in reverse it has a nice transition off the wheels. All there is to it. Once the HIFAX is installed, we like to start with the anti-stab kit first. The anti-stab has three inch wheels, so it has a nice transition off the drivers. And it comes with two spacing washers on each side. And for the K mod, we put two of them on the inside on each side. I like to lay a rag across here and just take some vice grips to hold the shaft. It doesn't take much, and that won't scar your shaft up with the rag on it. And run them in. Put one cross shaft in that holds the limiter strap next. And the key to a really reliable suspension is blue Loctite. We lock blue Loctite all the bolts. Doesn't take a lot, but that just takes all the fatigue out of everything and keeps them solid. First cross shaft goes in right behind the anti-stab. Go ahead and put that in locker down. I like using an 18 volt impact. It gives us almost the correct torque. Then we'll go in and, and re-cinch everything when we're done. Uh, once that's done, I like to put a rear shaft in temporarily, no Loctite. And that helps keep the rails square as we're assembling it. Keeps the twist out of the rails. Just put one back here and snug the bolts. Okay, next let's go with a shock shaft. Take a shock shaft and loosen the lock collars and let's back them off to where they're almost out. And then we blue Loctite the set screws on the lock collars. Just a drop is all it takes. Okay, we'll slide that off. The shock has a spacer washer on each side of the shock. This is the front track shock and it's typically got the shorter spring on it. 
and it's the bag's marked front track shock also. So we'll slide the shaft in, put a wire washer on each side, slide the lock collars on. And instructions it says to center the shock, but if you'll just measure with a tape, 15, uh, 2 and 15 sixteenths, just short of 3 inches on each side between the end of the shaft and the lock collar, then it's perfectly centered. 2 and 15 sixteenths. And I remember that by a sixteenth less than 3. And snug that down, and we're ready to go in with the front track shock. Now you want to install this with the QS3 down, so you can reach up underneath there and adjust your QS3. Okay, these shocks mount inverted. This is our new Fox lightweight version of a QS3 shock, new this year for the turnkeys. And there's two mounting positions in the rail, and for the Fox shocks we mount in the rear hole towards the back. And we can mount our front arm. Front arm shafts typically marked. It's called the front arm lower shaft. Install it in the arm. Lay it between the rails. Install the bolts. Then next we do the limiter strap. It just has one. This is a three ply, very heavy duty limiter strap, so all you need. If you look on the limiter straps, you have two holes with a space between them and three holes together on the other end and then adjustment holes in between. This goes around the cross shaft on the lower part of the skid. So I wrap it around the cross shaft here, double it up, and that's where them two attachments holes go. Leave that finger tight until we get the shock on and adjusted. Next we roll the arm, arm up and it Attach the shock. There's another small hint. When you're installing your upper shock bolt, if you remember righty tighty lefty loosey, as your track's rotating around that suspension, if it happens to come down and touch your nut on the shock mount, it's always tightening it if you install it from this side. Okay? If you stall it on the other side, I've had some nuts come loose because the track rubs and rubs and rubs and between the vibration it can loosen that nut. So it's just a little trick to keep your suspension bolts tight. Just need to snug those. It's got a lock nut. Don't need to cinch them really hard because it's got a bearing in there that, that rotates. Okay, that's the front shock and the front arm installed. Then the next move is to loosen up this spring really loose because we want to set our strap adjustment before we set the spring adjustment. I'm going to back that spring clear off. Okay, and for most of the sleds, we wrap this around and we'll go in the third hole from the top, two, three, on the front side and the second hole on the back right here. 
And that's for the majority of the suspensions, that's where you'll set the initial. That should give us around a 12 to 12 and a half inch default setting, which it does. Okay, that's in your instructions with a photo. Then we can lock that down. And again, this has a lock nut, so you don't need to cinch it really hard because we like it to float a little bit on the shafts. That's the front arm installed. This is your tunnel spacers for the front arm. The width of this arm is perfect for a Polaris, but we're going to install this suspension in Skidoo, so it has a shoulder on the tunnel spacers. And when this is mounted in the vehicle, them sit there like that, and then we have a bolt that goes through and attaches through the tunnel and attach the arm to the suspension to the vehicle. So we'll leave them in temporarily. Okay, next we're going to do the jounce bumpers, bump stops for the rear arm. Call them jounce bumpers. You want to install them with the tall part forward. They come with these small 1032 screws. I like to put them in from the outside. They got small washers. Okay, next we'll do the center cross shaft. We'll just start from the front and work our way back. The K-Mod uses three cross shafts, and that's to create rigidity and strength. Okay, things easier to get things in and out, we'll just loosen that rear shaft just a touch. Next, we'll go with the rear scissor. Okay, that comes assembled. Okay, that goes in between the rails like this, but there's a wear washer that goes on each side like this. What that does is that keeps the steel pivot from wearing into the rail, aluminum rail. So we just slide that in there. There's uh, two sides to the pivot, a short side, narrow, and a wide side, wide. The wide side goes against the coupler or towards the rear. And it goes in this lower front hole on the side of the rail. You'll not want to cinch this really hard until we get the rest of the back end assembled. Just makes it easier. Then we'll take this shaft out of the upper part of the scissors for the rear arm. It's the lower shaft. It installs right here. Go ahead and install that while we're here. Just sets down in. Let me go ahead and tighten down. Okay, next is the rear coupler. The coupler, you have four positions one, two, three, and four. And each one's a little bit more aggressive for planting the skis. I like to install it to where you can read the numbers from the back forward. Looks just like that. We're going to install it with the number one facing the coupler block. And the, the number that you're corresponding with as far as degrees of coupling is the number that's facing the rear scissor right here.
And that goes in the upper hole right behind the scissor. Okay, then our rear shaft, cross shaft. This new one leave pretty loose because we're going to get our rear axle assembly in there and we need to spread the rails slightly. We'll just leave this one out a little. Okay, our rear axle assembly is a tri-hub wheel, okay? They bolt together. Yeah, so we take our rear axle, take the ends off, that's our adjusters. Slide one wheel on, then the other wheel on. Line them up. Now the best way to install these, it can be very time consuming or very simple with the right tools. I typically assemble with one 3 8 and a uh, 3 8 drive extension with a 7 16 socket. That fits the nut. And then I'll have a 10 millimeter on the other side, 5 16 drive, whatever you got. Now, the best way to install them without spending a lot of time and dropping them, and I'll still drop them, is I like to pick it up like this. See the holes? I like to line that up from the top side, stick it in the hole, take my uh, 7 16 drop the flange head nut in the, into the socket, and just reach in there, and it uh, doesn't take much to get them started. And repeat. Snug these pretty good. You don't want to tighten them too tight because it's just plastic. There you're assembled. When you slide the adjuster on, it has a part for the adjuster bolt goes there. You slide that on each side and set that aside for a minute. Now we're going to install our adjusters in the rail. They come partially assembled. Um, they have a set screw on the one side of the horseshoe clip. You take that set screw out. Actually you don't have to take it clear out. You can just back it off till you see three or four threads, lock tight the threads, pull the C-clip off, undo the nut, slide the adjuster through with the nut towards the rear, then you take the C-clip C and you slide that over the top and that locks it into the rail, and if you have the C-clip with the Allen screw towards the rear, it's easy to get to. And we just run that in with the blue Loctite on it and just snug it. And that'll keep the adjuster in the rail. One unique thing about this adjuster is uh, we went to the Arctic Cat style adjuster a few years ago when we went to the Gen 3 skid. But the thing I didn't like about the stock Arctic Cat adjuster is it sit too close to the rail and it was very hard to adjust your, your track tension. And so we developed this, this uh, billet piece. We had these made and what it does is it moves everything inboard a quarter of an inch so you can actually get a wrench on the darn thing.
uh, then we take our axle symbol assembly with the holes for the adjusting screw forward on each side. So the screws we just put in, that's what will go into them holes. Then we just pry them rails apart slightly and get the grooves in the slots. Move that forward. Always like to put a little Loctite on these outside bolts. And they go in here. I just like to snug them until we install the skid. Okay, rear wheels are installed and snugged. So now we can go ahead and lock down these shafts. Next we'll install the rear shock. Go through the same sequence as the front shock with the shock shaft and the lock collars. Okay, when you're installing the rear shock, you want to have the QS3 adjuster facing down. The shock has a rebound adjustment also down here on the eyelet. And so when you're installing the shock, you don't want that down because it's hard to adjust and get, get to. But we want the QS3 down, so we just do a 180 on the shaft. And now we've got the, uh, the uh, rebound adjuster up to where we can get to it. You want to pay attention to that when you're installing the shock. Kind of wedge that between the rails and it lines right up. Now again, on your rear arm, you're going to put the bolt in to where it doesn't loosen the nut. The track won't loosen the nut if it rubs on it. Be from this side. Okay, there's a rear shock installed. On the QS3, uh, left is loose, right is tight, so turn it to the right, it gets tighter or firmer. One, two, three. So when you're reaching up there to adjust it, you want to turn it just like tightening a nut on a bolt. You want to go firmer, go to the right, tighten it. You want to go looser, go to the left. Okay, next, our rear cross shaft. This slides in the arm right here. We have a grease zerk on the bottom on each side because it just greases this bushing here. No sense filling this whole tube full of grease. We don't need to. So we just grease it from each side. Have uh, two lock collars that fit flush on the outside of the shaft. And then here's our carrier wheels that carry on the rear, rear arm. They slide on. And then the lock collars has an offset set screw. The set screw goes towards the outside so you can get an Allen wrench on it. And that's another one that we want to back off and lock tight. And they fit flush. The shaft fits flush with the end of the lock collar, so you know you got it in right once it's flush. Okay, that's done. Eye scratchers come in a package. They have a patch lock bolt. Now before we install them, we're going to put a set. Typically I include these with a new suspension. These are a K-Mod eye scratcher extension. And basically you can fine tune the spray of how you want it to direct back to your track. So to install these, I like taking a, just a knife to get the powder coat off. You want to take about an inch off. Again, blue Loctite, can't emphasize enough. It's got a set screw on it. We 
Loctite that. I like putting just a little down the hole. Okay. Before I really cinch that set screw, I'll install the scratcher first. If you tilt the skid up on the side, it makes this job a little easier. Get the right scratcher for the right side. You have a mount boss, mount bushing that goes in it. And a bolt comes in from the inside. Just line that up on the two holes here in the front of the rail. Install that. And typically you don't need to use a wrench on the outside, although it is cut for a wrench. Come inside at the impact. And tighten her down. Now if you look, that right there is angling the spray towards the slide rail. Okay, it's dragging it from the outside and pushing it towards the center. And that's what we want. We want to throw as much spray and lube towards the Hyfax as possible. This is a mountain suspension. We don't have idlers, although we do have an idler wheel option. But it's typical for deeper snow, so on icy mornings or hard pack trails, you need to really pay attention to your Hyfax and lube. You'll want to make sure you dive over into the snow every eighth to quarter mile and make sure we get some lube on the Hyfax because they can heat up quick without any lube. Uh, what I like to do right at the very end is just make a run around with a ratchet and snug my bolts pretty decent with a ratchet. As far as the torque setting, I'm going to tell you it's exactly 35 pounds. <laughs> Okay, last part of the assembly is to set your spring rate. So this is an eight inch spring and we like to set it at seven and a half inches, so a half inch of preload. And we always do that after we set the strap. Because if we do it before we set the strap, you'll end up with about seven inches, which is too much. But the free length of the spring, you want to measure it and you want to measure just the free length of the spring, not the keeper or the adjusting nut, but just the spring. This is Fox's new lightweight spring. It's a nice one. Okay, that's that. Then we're going to lock the lock collar so the string doesn't back off. And if you'll adjust that to where you can get to it with an Allen wrench, probably on an angle like that, it's easier. Because when you're on the trail, if you want to adjust it, you don't want to have an issue get to it. Now the rear spring is our new dual spring setup. So we have a two inch spring here and an eight inch spring here with no preload. And when I send them out, I typically, the default setting is I'll preload them a quarter of an inch. So this is at an inch and three quarters. And we want to measure just the spring, not the keeper, or the adjusting nut or the spacer in there, just the spring. So that's an inch and three quarters. It has a quarter inch of preload. And this spring here is an eight inch spring. And the combination of the two, we can fine tune that rate, uh, pretty broad range of tuning ability just by adjusting preload. And then if the shock, then you have the QS3. And I, I'll, I, I recommend everybody to start in number one, the default setting on the spring, and ride it. You'll find number one is going to be pretty plush, pretty soft, bottom out easily on medium bumps. That's okay. You're using all the suspension. If you want to take away that bottom out, switch this to number two first, front and rear. Okay, you'll notice a, uh, quite a difference in it. It'll take all the medium bump bottom out, out of it. And this is typically where you'll probably ride in the backcountry most of the times on number two. Number three is if you want to ra rail on stuff hard or do some jumping, you can run the, the uh, dampener up to number three, and it'll be quite a bit firmer. Now, if you still find you're bottoming it out on some of the bigger stuff that you don't like, you can always do a little bit more preload. And it doesn't take much to change. We don't recommend going shorter than an inch and a half on this, another quarter of inch preload. But each two turns is about a sixteenth of an inch. So I'd try two turns at a time when you're adjusting this preload right here, and you'll notice a difference. It's very, very susceptible to tuning and very tunable, the K-Mod suspension is. All right, we're gonna move the stock suspension out of a Skidoo. They can be a bear sometimes, sometimes they come right out, but I've recruited my Skidoo removing specialist, Rich Grover here, that's gonna help us out. So let's go ahead and start, Rich. On the new Skidoo turbos, they have the adjustable limit strap, and with the K-Mod, we eliminate that, and we'll show you how to get that off easily and sanitarily so where you can put it back on when you remarket your vehicle too. Uh, first thing I like to use is a scribe. Uh, and with the scribe we'll go here and just pull the decal off. We'll get here in the corner. And on new sleds it comes up pretty easy. You want to be careful not to get the backside glue much. 
He can avoid it. Okay, we'll just set that off to the side. Then we take a small punch. And I've made this punch, I filed it down to where we can pound the nail head out of the center of the rivet. And that makes drilling the rivet out considerably easier. But there's two rivets underneath that decal that we're going to drill. They're just aluminum rivets, they're not too hard to get out. And I've got some special needle nose vice grips to reach up and grab the backside while we drill it. And this just pops straight out. You notice it's got a little ball socket, plastic ball socket on the inside, and it just pops right out. That's the first step. Second step, if we let this down and take just a little bit of the spring load off the suspension, then when you pop the bolts out, it doesn't drop. These stock bolts are Loctited in, patch lock. They can be a bear. The key is to get one of them out, and then we'll wire brush the patch lock off or use a different bolt, put it back in with a little bit of lube, and then cinch it down firm and then attack the other side, and hopefully it, the other side comes right out. Rich has kind of found a little bit of a shortcut. He likes to loosen the track, take the tension off the springs and the, and the shaft assemblies, and that helps also. He's going to tighten the one side as tight as he can get it. Okay. And then we'll see if the other side will come out. That's when you know things are working right. You hear that noise. If you remove the first bolt, we like to heat it up. Heat the lock patch up, get it nice and soft, and then wire brush it off. Okay. Then we'll lube it up, little WD, and reinstall it. We'll cinch the lube bolt down pretty firm. And with any luck, this will come right back out. That noise there is a very good sign. That means the bolt's coming out, shaft's not turning. And the lube bolt come right back out, so we're good. The front arm's usually the hardest one, so hopefully the back will come out pretty slick now. Out. Out with the old. Now the next step in our installation, we need to install tunnel plates. So to make room for that, we like to slide the track forward, clear underneath the snowmobile, between the skis, and roll it up forward. like that. There is a backing plate on the inside of the tunnel that's riveted in. We remove it. There's one rivet right here. There's one rivet underneath this wrap. We'll drill those rivets out on each side. This is the new backing plate that we include with the suspension. And this will go on the inside of the tunnel. After we removed the factory plate, we'll put in the new K-Mod plate. It has an arrow for up and an F for forward. So that plate would go on this side like this, because the arrow's up, and this is forward. And on the other side, it would go in just like that. Um, this hole here matches up with the factory rear hole that we just drilled out. So we'll put that in place. 
and we, it comes with a short and a long rivet in your kit. We use the short rivet on the original hole right there. Yeah. Okay, we'll pop that in on each one on each side. Again, it has an arrow and an F. So this one would actually be turned around where you can't see it and fit up into the chassis like this. Because it has the arrow up and the F for forward. We'll put that in. And again, the rear rivet hole matches the rear hole in this plate. And on the outside of the X models, we have a filler plate. If you notice, it has a rivet hole in it. And this is going to be the new K-Mod -Mod mounting positions here for the front arm. And that filler plate goes right in this area here. Fits right down flush with the cutout for the running board. That fits flush there. And that's a filler plate, so our bolts has a flat clamping surface when it's bolted in. Okay, so we'll just set that there temporarily. Okay, the key to this new plate is see this pilot hole underneath on this interior brace. We want to line up the new K-Mod lower hull as close to the center of that as we can get it, which is about right there. And then we'll pop the new rivet hole in this side. We'll take the filler plate, put it back on, and then we'll install that rivet. That's the long one. Through the filler plate and the interior plate. Okay, so the new rivet interior backing plate is installed. Now we'll drill the front arm holes with a 3 8 bit. And we want to drill from the inside out because we're going to use our new backing plate as a pilot for the drill bit. So we'll want to drill one or both of these holes out. And depending on your turbo and your horsepower level and your vehicle, um, I typically run the stock sleds in the lower holes and pump gas turbos in the lower hole. It makes it more lively, more playful, but yet still keeps all the track in the snow. For the bigger high horsepower or the high boost sleds, and you like a lot more control well mounted in the upper hole. As you can see, the, the new backing plate will be used as our, our pilot. And we use a 3 h drill bit. and just pop that new hole in there. And while you're here, I always like to chase the factory mounting hole. Okay, that's the factory mounting hole. So if you, stop, you install your stock suspension back in to move the vehicle, to sell the vehicle, that goes to back to the factory mounting hole and just leave this plate right in. And then we just duplicate it on this side. Now we're gonna install the drop bracket covers and this will give us the alignment hole for the rear arm to drill. And these fit symmetrically all the way around flush and we'll install it with a button head bolt installed from the inside out. Comes with your package of hardware and an acorn nut. I like to uh, Loctite that bolt and then just cinch it by hand for the time being. This has a uh, about a 10 degree angle bent into it and sometimes on my bender I get them a little bit steeper than that. So what we like to do is take some vice grips of some kind. I have these handy ones and uh, we'll just bring this together with some vice grips after we put the button head bolt in so it fits flush. Okay, then once it's on you can adjust with a hammer so it's flush and try to get the same amount flush on each side. I like to flush this part right here. Okay, once that's flush then we can and put a rivet here and here. And that attaches that plate to the outside of the drop bracket. Okay, these rivets we want to install from the inside out so your track doesn't rub on the end of the rivet. Got a coating on them, so sometimes you have to tap them in. You always want to make sure you install the plate with the new pilot hole towards the rear. Where it's got Loctite on it, you can just snug it. Okay, right here on the drop bracket above the factory hole, there's an eighth inch pilot hole. Okay, I like to take an eighth inch drill bit and just run that through the original drop bracket. So 
then we take them new pilot holes, we drill them out to 3 8 Okay, there's a few grease points on the K mod we'll go over. First one's the front arm lower shaft. We fill that full till we see grease run out each side, and typically that's good for all seasons. Okay, and on the rear arm, if you notice, there's a grease circ on each side. We have a bushing on each side. And the shaft is narrow through the middle to save weight, so we don't need to fill this whole tube with grease. We'll just grease each side. So if you'll give that a pump, roll it, give it a pump, roll it, another pump, roll it. You can kind of see the grease all the way around the inside there. A couple more, and that's good on that one. That one's good. The rear scissor, there's a lower one on the rear scissor. This is the only part of the suspension that's old school, and it has an aluminum shaft inside a steel tube. So this needs to be completely full of grease, and this shaft you'll want to grease about every fourth ride. Just give it one or two pumps, is plenty. And then the rear arm is like the front arm. It's once a year. And this upper shaft on the upper arm typically is just once a year. Unless you put a lot of miles on, then grease it every month or so. See the grease on each side? We have the tunnel spacers for the front arm. And they have knurling spots in them. If you notice they got little grooves knurled in them, and that's to hold grease. And we grease these once a year. If you service your skid in the fall, and I like to take the excess grease off the front arm to do them, it doesn't take much. Okay, and you just want to rub that and get it good and coated. And it's a pretty tight fit, so the knurling helps hold the extra grease that you have in there. That just installs, and I like to roll it as you install it. So you can see it doesn't take much. Wipe the excess off, and it's ready to install. Unlike the stock suspension, the K-Mod suspension comes in and out very easily. Uh, the rear bolts for the rear arm we want a Loctite. The front bolts are, are attached with a washer and a lock nut, so you don't have to Loctite those. And we have one of these on each side. I like to set them in the ski so you know where they're at. Start the front end, slide it in, throw the back end in. Once it sits down in the clips, you know you got her. And we lower it back down a bit. Pull all the slack out of your suspension. Take the front bolt. You can use your foot to align the rear suspension, kick it back. bolt goes in just like that. Put the thick washer on the inside with the lock nut. Now adjust the track. We use a 5 16 drive with a 10 millimeter socket and a universal joint on it with an extension. And we can reach right back to the adjuster bolts and tighten both of them from one side. Typically track tension, we like a half inch right in the center of the track. Half inch of natural sag right in the center. Okay, once you get that close, start it up and align it. Okay, now we 
snug the rear axle. Okay, in your kit comes three push plugs, and they're to fill excess holes that we leave when we take your stock suspension out. The two small ones go in the stock suspension front arm mounting hole, and then the big plug goes in your limiter strap adjuster. We like to put a little black RTV on there, just to help hold them in. They just push in. One right there. Okay, let's talk about the four position quick coupler. This, this adjustment here controls ski lift. So number one will be pretty playful, pretty lively. And we're talking about the number that faces the pivot. So we're on number one right now. And as that arm comes down and the pivot touches the coupler, once it touches the coupler, it starts to pull the rails up in and takes some of the attitude of the vehicle back down. So number one's right there. And if, and if you, it's preloaded with O-rings, so you never are not able to turn it. You can reach down here with your hand. No matter how much ice and snow is in there, it'll just rock forward and turn it to number two. And if you don't think you got it quite right, it'll correct itself once the, once the pivot touches the coupler. But that's number two, and that's probably where a majority of people will ride back in the boonies and the trees and cross country is number two. It's still pretty playful, but yet helps really keep a lot of the track in the snow. Um, number three and number four is primarily for climbing really steep stuff. And if you notice the scissor touches really quick now, and that really starts to pull the rails up in, and that'll keep the attitude of that vehicle really flat when you're climbing really steep. So that's the four position quick coupler, and it's easy to change, takes less than five seconds, do it with no tools.